Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Cast Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Fiorello, a Glagaria lover, but we gotta read about blood on the streets of Harlem. Brutal violence has hit the upper Manhattan neighborhood of Harlem today, as mob violence broke out across multiple city blocks. Initial reports indicate that the riot was sparked over a young black boy who fell off his bike and used water from a whites only water fountain to clean his scrapes, ignorant of the rigid color bar that so dominated the city despite our newly independent state. The ball pleaded innocence and ignorance, but was accosted by a group of belligerent, um, <clears throat> uh, who what? teens who lambasted the boy for breaking the law before a group of negro onlookers stepped in to defend the child causing the white onlookers to join on in and the other side of things endlessly escalated eventually fists started flying with either side accusing the other of swinging at first causing a broader breakout until shots started to lick off and blood started flowing down harlem streets what started as a small argument exploded and within hours the violence spread until nearly all of harlem had been enveloped in racial violence as negroes and other oppressed minorities battled it out with the white Vigilantes in the NYPD amid miscellaneous looting and other opportunistic crime. With these here riots and their effects still spreading throughout Harlem and its neighboring neighborhoods, voices across the city began to use this flashpoint as a rallying cry against the government, with this event being the catalyst needed to further fuel both the ever rising racial tension within the city as well as the march for civil rights and other more radical political movements. Now, many cry for the city council to do something to stop the chaos, but with the NYPD already on the scene, there's little that can be done aside from sending in the National Guard, which is in option for a few mayors which to have to use. There's some that believe this will merely blow over as it always does, so perhaps maybe we should just listen to them instead. Pull the group, the police back. Have faith in the boys in blue. This again, they can handle this. Know your place trash. Send in the National Guard. Have faith in the boys in blue. Eh, boo? Blue? What we're doing, of course, right now. <clears throat> a city under siege. You know, I can't remember if I read this one or not, but the city never sleeps. Uh, return us to Nacho in the rise of his Rat Pack. So if you want to read this one again, please go right ahead. I'm sure I read this one yesterday, but I can't remember. Finishing his initial stint in the military, but still holding on to his rank and position, Frank Sinatra, who has made a name for himself now both as a soldier and entertainer, has returned to semi-civilian life in the Big Apple in order to continue his new musical his, continue his musical careers. Oh, look at that, it looks really cool. And joined by friends met during the war as well as from his pre-war days, Sinatra has announced the creation of his Rat Pack, including other such musical wonders such as Dean Martin, Joey Bishop, Peter Lawford, and the young Sammy Davis Jr. The Rat Pack aims to sweep the city that never sleeps by storm with a new wave of jazz and rock-inspired crooning. Together under the management of Sinatra, famous actor and financier Humphrey Bogart, and his wife Lauren Bacall, and Sammy Davis Sr., uh, famous vaudeville performer himself, these suave golden voices lady killers will continue to fly to the moon as they pursue ever greater heights of fame and musical achievement. New York and the rest of the world will shall watch these young studs with great interest as, they, as their sultry songs and uh, dulcet tones float through our ears and into the heavens, carrying us with them atop their melodic, melodic masterpieces. We'll do it our way. <clears throat> Which, of course. Of course we'll do it our way. See the never sleeps, of course. Oh, what do we have over here? Ooh. Oh, gotta think about this. Uh, I guess superior firepower, I guess. Why not? We'll go with that one. Um, unnecessary draft. We could do that. Ooh, that's pretty good, too. Funds from the Federal Reserve. That looks pretty decent. The Federal Reserve was once the most esteemed financial repository in the United States, and as the new boulders fell, luck would have it that this fountain of near endless wealth sits squarely within our territory. We shall persuade those who run the reserve to finance their administration's new plans for the city without, for without their excessive amount of capital. We surely fly our about with no real direction. Boy, I got some comments to go through, such as. Can you do a Ying Guang Dao Qing authority playthrough as well? Maybe eventually, maybe eventually. So when else says, go liberal or technocratic USA in Red Flood, which at the time of this recording, I think Red Flood is still not updated, and someone says, fastest notifications in the West, so thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. So, the world America is killing itself, but it really looks like the American Union State is going to win here. I'm surprised that the combined syndicates hasn't capitulated yet, but we'll see. And I actually, I really want to play as a Crimea now, because they look really, they look like a lot of fun. They really look like a lot of fun. Infantry Division Defense, plus 15%. Jesus. Sanatoriums. Well, that's kind of cool. S severe water shortage. Do they got wine as well? <coughs> crimson. Oh, cr not crimson, but Crimean, Crimean wine. Oh, that's cool. Full export. Nice. And more infantry. That'd be a good organization. That'd be very, very nice. Down Republic, of course. Um, the King of Ukraine, I think, is fighting the Reich's pack. Don't know trying to fight Illyria and... Uh, yeah... Yeah, Third International is just kind of hanging out. It is 1938, of course, everybody, but still. And it just seems like the world is just killing itself. But what else with is new? Build bridges. Jobs with real estate. Titans. And there goes that normal stuff. Ooh. Construction speed factory output. Free repair. Maintain trade networks. Free trade. It's not terrible, but still. I mean, uprising. Uh, which one do we want? Crackdown on unions. Well, we can't do that one. 
will probably empower the unions. Uh, so making a self-sufficient New York Manhattan project. Friends in high places. That's not bad, too. Getting the extra stability to be pretty good. And we can remove a burning Big Apple, which is something we really want. Uh, a New York, a new army for New York. That's pretty decent as well. Beyond the city limits. Claim upper. Oh. Second revolt. We can't do. Ooh. Why can't we do this one? Oh, we're gonna do one of these two first. So. Exclusive with these other three. Exclusive with these two as well. Claim upstate. Claim New Jersey. It's not bad. New York said reunify the American United States. International neutral zone. A free, independent, safe New York City. It sounds like that path we should go with. Um, maybe our current path. Maybe we'll see in a little bit. But like New the police department seems like we should go with that route. But let's go with the ties of the real estate titans. New York City has long been the heart of American architecture, real estate, and mass property development. We should align ourselves with the great titans, moguls of the real estate industry, so that they may provide their expertise, industry, and funding to our cause. It's slightly more market liberalism, which isn't a terrible thing for us. And yeah, not bad. As we watch the world burn, we only have two divisions here, which is going to suck. And the divisions themselves aren't too bad, actually. All we have are guns, though, which could be better, but still. Still. Yeah, we want to reclaim upstate New York. We have to kill these guys. And I don't think we're in any position to really take on the Entente. Are they in the Entente? They are in the Entente. Don't think we're in any position to do so. So we might just go with independence route. We'll see. Anything here? Rally public support, more social liberalism. I mean, we could. I'd like to go to war economy. Chief of the Air Force? Sure, why not? Maintain trade networks? Let's wait for that one. Uh, what to do with the Wall Street folk? Wall Street, a hive of sin and corruption or a beacon of capitalist success and freedom? That is for us to decide now that stability is returned to the Big Apple. We must figure out what to do with Wall Street once and for all, while some defend its properly profit-making ability, others detest its predatory nature. And as such, it's up to our administration to decide. Let's see, what are we going to do? Strangle organized crime. Embrace the gray market. We get way more weekly stability. Plus 6%. Crime problem. Strangle organized crime. You know what? If we can do both on one side... Let me go both right side. Embrace the gray market. Though organized crime and other criminal groups do much damage to our city, they also provide necessary services to black markets and black room deals as such. <clears throat> we should partially embrace this dark underbelly of New York City, secretly forming ties with less egregious offenders for the good of the city and for the good of our profit margin. The fate of Wall Street. Wall Street was a symbol of American prosperity before its fire crash during the Depression, before it fall, or its fell. It was the financial hub of the world, and its rise dragged the rest of the world up with it, and as such, its falls took the rest of the world with it. The Great Depression, the pre-Civil War instability, and the fight for our freedom have done a number of Wall Street, with many of its buildings being closed or in ruin, and the stock market laying mostly abandoned even now. However, with the situation in our nation finally mostly abandoned, or it's mostly stable now, we decided to take a firm position or policy towards the street. Socialists within the city detest the notion of Wall Street and wish to see it burn. They decry as the center jewel in the crown of capitalism, and if we were to destroy it, we can make a newer, more humane economy on its ashes. However, the rest of the city predictably has the opposite view. They point to the prosperity of the city, or the early 1900s, and the titans of industry created as proof that the state, or the street, must be saved. They argue that if we go about destroying the very foundations of American capitalism like the stock market, then we could do irreparable harm to the economy. We must make a decision. Burn away the last vestiges of this failed and gaudy system. Leave it be. It'll be useful to us, to the economy, to the rebuilding efforts. We'll do that one for now. We'll save it for now. And actually, instead of doing the impressive gray market, we're going to strangle organized crime. We don't want corruption here. Organized crime in the form of the mafia under the commission has no place within a newly independent New York City. Utilizing new legislation as well as the strength of police force and judiciary. We shall crack down on organized crime and other criminality within the Big Apple once and for all so that the rot does not set in and do irreversible damage. Well, as much as we can do that one. <clears throat> the power of the unions. The city is filled with unions, representing numerous different industries and groups while bargaining for better rights and protections for the working class. Seeing useful political ally and a uh, economic asset in these unions. Uh, our administration has issued a proclamation in support of unionization throughout the city and its industries. These unions will be allowed to expand while being empowered by the state, giving our working masses a real and useful tool in combating workplace oppression through the power of collective bargaining. As long as they don't become corrupt. We want zero corruption here. So, and also the American Union has capitulated the CSA, which is insane. As they're solely surrounding Washington. <clears throat> 
This is insane watching this happen. MacArthur, you have 2,000 manpower. On oh my goodness. Yeah, you got lucky, Huey Long Dong. Especially with Hiram Johnson just not doing anything. Oh man, if they could just snip, snipe this. Oh, hello. Oh, I think the Entente Digging evolved. Kingdom of Canada is now at war with... Oh no, just the federal government! Okay. Wow. Well, Baltimore fell. Are these guys even connected? They're probably not even connected now. Holy smokes. Uh, Bill Bridges across the Hudson. The mighty Hudson River divides our city, creating the archipelago with the mouth of the river that we now call home. In order to better connect our city and to breathe new life in our economy by creating new jobs, we shall requisition the construction of a series of new bridges and tunnels that will further connect our city, both within our own borders and to our neighbors in New Jersey and upstate. 1939, New York, World's Fair. Seeking to uh, keep with global tradition, despite the instability the world is facing, Mayor Fiorello H. Lagardi has gone ahead with the previous plans of having New York City host a 1939 to 1940 World's Fair. This fair was originally planned to be perhaps, perhaps the largest, most extravagant World's Fair of all time, one to even trump St. Louis's Louisiana Purchase Exposition in 1904, but with the rea reality, our Big Apple now faces this plan. Drafted by City Planning King of New York City, Robert Moses, had to be scaled back immensely. However, the theme of the fair is still to be the future, and all non-syndicalist nations of the world are eligible to attend and prepare expositions or booths, with nations like Germany, Canada, Japan, and the National French Republic in exile all in attendance. They brought many of their allies with them, ensuring a full and fun experience for all visitors. Planned to go on for a few months, as this is tradition, and held in the Flushing Meadows Corona Park in Queens, the 1939 World's Fair should entertain and educate the masses of the globe on the new future humanity is rapidly progressing towards now. Come, let us gaze into the world of tomorrow today. Witness is dawn of a new day as we take a look into the world of tomorrow. This is... I would be pooping my pants if I was uh, Douglas MacArthur right now. I mean, yeah, they're holed up in mountains, but, like... How long can they hold out? Ooh, there go them Philippines. Let me do some water. No coffee yet, but just a lot of water. I hope no one tries to invade us. The fall of Washington, maybe. Oh, maybe they might be mobilizing more as well right now, too. Yeah. Oh. What's that? Some actually plays Greece. Hellenic Republic, huh? Who really plays Greek, the Greek boys sometimes? Oh my goodness! The Black Sea Alliance is doing so well. Oh, the Don Republic actually joined the Russian Republic. Or the faction, at least. Oh, and there, there you go. Crimean Federation, huh? Wow. While that will comes home, with the American Civil War raging and with our state joining the fray late, most prominent naval officers from New York are sent out to sea under the other banners even before we even rose to ours. As such, our naval officers corps is woefully lacking in real experience, but it would seem like luck has favored us for our saving angels finally arrived. There they go. Disembarking from that small PD boat that quietly took him to shore after crossing hundreds of miles to get here, the ingenious and respected Admiral William Halsey Jr. stepped foot onto the wharf of the Brooklyn shipyards, breathing in the intoxicating aroma of salty sea air mixed with welding fumes and ship oil as the gold screeched above and the waves lopped against the docks. Finally back in his hometown, after fighting the good fight for the Federalists, our governor's given Halsey a full pardon for any and all actions in the Civil War, although Halsey was not stationed near New York after refusing to fire on the people of his home of New York City and New Jersey, or North Jersey. As such, Admiral Halsey has taken command of the New York Navy as well as rising to become the chief naval officer and the highest admiral of the nation. <clears throat> With experience, old Ironside leading our naval forces, New York shall once again have a worth fleet, uh, fleet worth fearing. Never trust a fighting man doesn't smoke or drink. Expand Porter Authority. The Port Authority is responsible for all commercial and civilian shipping going in and out of New York City's harbors. As such, it's of vital importance that this needed institution be well funded and supplied with the most cutting-edge technologies. With new ferries, oh boy, uh, and expanded merchant marine, the Big Apple's maritime industry will only continue to thrive. A little bit of lag, but probably because, yeah, I don't think these guys can hold up. I, yeah, they got help from the Entente stuff. Mexican economics, progressive society. That hurts the consumer gets weekly stability plus two percent. Holy crap! And then these, huh? Wait, what? Why do they have a ceasefire? That literally makes no sense. You gave up this territory? Why would you give up Utah? Is that Utah? No, that is Utah. Why would you give up Utah? Why does Utah have this part of Colorado? Ah, when's the last time the Union of Burma actually joined the Reichs Pact? What is going on?
Why am I not trading divisions? That's a good question to ask as well. There's Ukraine, and they actually got this tile. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Oh, they lost this tile too, huh? Maybe? That's a sad Ukraine. And Poland... Why'd you... It's disgusting. Found the New York International Airport. In order to further expand and modernize the infrastructure of the Big Apple, we've gone ahead with the creation of the New York International Airport a few years before originally scheduled. Facts tracking its, its construction will only benefit our infantile state. Better connecting us to the wider world. Oh, well, look at that. With the state of the art aeronautical technology that will be useful in both civilian and military settings. Catholic America, what's next? National Populist Germany? Wait. Sir, oh, my goodness. Serene Republic of the American Union State. I've done hit this path before. I've actually gone down with Philip Carroll. Oh. Oh. Oh, nope. I've not done... I don't think I've done this one before. Jacobite King. Jesus. Death of Carol. The next step. Social justice, unlikely successor, Uncle Earl, American radicalism. We're building the country, of course. Pappy O'Donnell. Christian Party victory. My type of party. National Progressive Party, New Washington. Gunpowder plot. They must go down this way. Oh, crap. Well, it is August already, so... Oh, and you guys are killing each other, which is nice. Oh, wow, holy crap. Afghanistan, why are you so strong? I need to play as Afghanistan as well. Weekly Manpower's not bad. It loses a lot of stability, though. The only problem with Kaiser Redux, or the, or the main problem, with, at least for me, sometimes, is uh, it's just very laggy. Maintain trade networks. Despite the chaos that surrounds the city, we cannot let this come to harm the trade networks we've built up over the decades, for they are the lifeline of the city. With most foodstuffs being important, and with a large portion of our economy centered around maritime trade, these trade routes are of their utmost importance. As such, they must be repaired, expanded, and multiplied so the New York City can rule the waves once again as the th Thalassocratic King of the Seas. The rise of modern New Yorker gladiatorialism. Ooh, nice. Uh, Seeking to bring entertainment and economic activity to their wanton metropolis, the father and son duo of Roderick James Jess McMahon Sr. and Vincent Vince James McMahon have come together to create Capital Wrestling Corporation here in the heart of the Big Apple. Setting up their HQ in downtown Manhattan along with Jesse's brother Edward and running out local sports areas from the small local gyms to even the illustrious Madison Square Garden, the McMahons, a devout Irish New Yorker family tied to the illustrious Manhattan College and each with their own history in the professional wrestling and boxing circuits, have introduced a city that never seeps to the bloody island theatric and over-the-top world of professional wrestling and boxing, though some fights are staged and nearly comical for the sake of entertaining the masses. The McMahons still promote and organize tr true and fair boxing and wrestling matches across the five boroughs and beyond. Seeking to expand their operations to a sort of worldwide wrestling federation one day, the McMahon family, headed by the patriarch Jess, are poised to bring economic activity and gri gripping entertainment to the masses of our newly independent and recently stabilized metropolis. Let's get ready to rumble. Nice. That's cool. Uh, actually, you know what? I think we want to go with tactical bombers. Oh, well, whatever. Doesn't matter. We'll get some casts. The world's just a mess. Our purge is really sucking hard here. Syria is doing some good damage, though. They have no manpower left. Okay, Sultan. Alright. Airborne defense. Wow, plus 30% attack and defense. Holy crap. Jeez. Well, Jacobite Kingdom of America. You're now red. Um... Oh, and here it comes again. Old one, okay. Organization. Oh, more entrenchment though. I don't know. I like the entr I love entrenchment actually. Cover rate's not bad, but Lamport. Organization though. I always go that one. Getting mass entrenchment though is no laughing matter. It's actually really good. Well, half of them get already. Lost your Valonia. Okay. 
That was fast. A self-sufficient New York City. We must be isolated in self-sufficient island, able to cut off itself from the rest of the world if need be, and be able to survive in such isolated state for as long as it may be required. As such, we must construct as many local industries and domestic stockpiles of necessary goods and resources so that our big apple can truly come to rely on no one other than ourselves to survive. Pretty much. You know, after that one. Uh, Manhattan Project. Friends in high places. New York City has long been home to many of the world's elite, with royals, politicians, entertainers, scientists, artists, and other public figures, both foreign and domestic, settling down or purchasing additional property here for decades before it collapsed. We must call upon these old ties now that stability has been achieved so that these friends in high places may provide the goods, services, and capital of the Big Apple once more, and the Manhattan Project. Utilizing materials sourced from the Congo, our administration has moved forward with this plan to tap the power of the radioactive materials as a means of producing energy in immense quantities. Dubbed the Manhattan Project, this covert plan hopes to create a fully operational nuclear power plant within just a few years. And if some other discoveries are made about the use of such a technology along the way, then so be the it. The prosperity of the city spreads eastward, with stability and the prosperity returning to our metropolis since the chaos of our initial rise. The often neglected and always isolated Long Islanders have begun to bask in the glow of the Big Apple. All across Long Island, from Am Amityville to Montauk, New communities rise and New Yorkers leave the city to vacation or settle down in the quaint, peaceful beauty of New York's southern appendage. With the rise of new and modern suburban communities like Levittown, to the explosion of Jones Beach as a vacation town, Long Island is solidifying itself as a gateway for New Yorkers and the idyllic mirrored half to the hustle and bustle of the Big Apple, although many of the long-established elite families of this beautiful archipelago despise the long-established family elites. Oh no, despite a new wave of city suckers and tourists, the money and business these visitors and settlers bring cannot be ignored, and Long Island has seen a rebirth like none other. As the new highway system links Suffolk and Nassau counties to Queens and Brooklyn, Long Island shall become an integrated part of New York City like never before. Long Island is a great, big, equal part of our new New York. Pretty much right there. Huh, Long Island. Big miracles in the Big Apple. Despite the odds in our tumultuous starting situation, we've done the impossible and reverse economic collapse plaguing the city if that never seeps. From economic ruin to the once again being the shining pearl of global finance, our metropolis has lived through an economic miracle like never seen before. Now, from the top of this lofty and prosperous position, we shall guide the economic world towards new lands of untold profit and prosperity. City of skyscrapers? City of metropolitan multiculturalism. A city of skyscrapers. New York City is in the most diverse skyline in the world, home to many dozens of unique skyscrapers, each erected in a certain style and for a certain purpose. We must continue this tradition of reaching towards the heavens by continuing to build more and more skyscrapers, each more extravagant, unique, and taller than the last. Our shining city upon the hill shall scrape the heavens themselves as we reach towards the skies with our ingenuity and ambition, providing new office space, housing, and more, of course, along the way. Which is pretty good for month population, and max factories in a state, and construction speed and research speed. Well, it seems pretty decent to me. This is so weird. So weird. But we get 1.3 political power every single day, and we're currently doing subsidized Long Island's agricultural industry. With upstate and chaos, Long Island is the long breadbasket of New York City, while also being diametrically opposed to the interests of most city dwellers. We must appease these uppity elites through subsidies and incentives in order to increase agricultural production in the various ranches and farms across Long Island. Uh, building slots are okay. We need steel. Buy smell trees from Bethlehem Steel. One of the largest steel producers in the nation, Bethlehem Steel, in upstate New York, has the machinery we need to begin domestic steel production here in the city. We shall build or buy their extra steel foundries and other heavy machinery needed to produce steel so that we may make some of them the five boroughs. <coughs> A city of metropolitan multiculturalism. Our city is a metropolitan melting pot with Ellis Island and her war torn borders bringing in thousands of new faces a year. This multicultural reality is impossible to ignore, and so we must embrace it for the good of the city. Each culture and group brings something valuable to the table, and as such, we shall welcome each and every soul who enters our fine city so that each contributes to the whole. Together, by embracing what makes us different and what makes us the same, we shall build a better, more prosperous, more profitable, profitable New York City. What the heck? Did they lose? No, they don't have Bond 1. Okay. Wow. I did not expect... Hungry to get port access ever again. I got a place hungry. Holy crap. That's actually really impressive. They would go from all the way from Budapest to all the way to Gospic. Gospic? We have Venice owns this too. Whoa. Whoa, this is weird. A project to change the world. Authorized by the city government and headed by the brilliant local physicist of Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer. 
Whoa, what is this? A secret project has been initiated that seeks to use the works of the big brain such as Oppenheimer, Einstein, Born, Phillips, and more in order to create a nuclear device underneath the heart of the Manhattan. Utilizing the subway system as an easy mode of logistics and transport and with an endless supply of seawater around us to act as coolant. The team seeks to create a fully functional nuclear reactor underneath the city in an attempt to provide clean energy to the entirety of the Big Apple. Though the plan may seem foolish to some and in a direct pathway toward death and destruction to others, Oppenheimer and his team have dedicated to bringing the future of the present to the present here in New York City. All the wonders of the modern world right under our feet. Break ground in the end second system. In order to better connect the five borough systems, or the five boroughs, the, uh, oh, oh, goodness, the IND second system has been planned. This massive expansion of the subway network shall finally establish a continuous link between all the boroughs, connecting a metropolis like never before. A giant, oh. Wait, what? In, what the heck? Um. Okay. Catholic education. Distributism. Catholic unions. Uh, okay. Interesting. Huh. Well, we'll see what happens. Rack specs looking okay. <clears throat> I love the Black Sea Alliance. It looks so cool. Oh, and Spain's in the Rack spec too. I didn't realize that. Oh, they did lose slight part of that point, but that's okay for now. Alright. Two focus trees done. Two more to go. Sort of ish. Um, well, I'm going to wait for one for the last. Uh, unnecessary draft. Though men within our population will find the move to be disagreeable to say the least, we must instate a mandatory draft so that we can gather the manpower needed to defend our city. It shall only be a temporary measure, hopefully, but for now all able-bodied men between the ages of 18 and 35 are subject to possibly being drafted, and any draft dodgers shall be forced to penal labor so long as to provide some use for the state. Though more manpower never hurt us. Anything up here? Not really. And we have no steel. We're negative 45, which is honestly really, really bad. As we're just kind of hanging out. Oh, wow, look at that. Reich's fact is uh, not doing so well. United Provinces of China, Fengshan government, Mongolia is in the Commonwealth of Independent Nations, the CIN. I thought you'd be fighting Canada. Oh, oh, look at that guy, handsome guy. Oh, no, you're actually fighting. Oh, they're international. Well, only a crisis. What do you mean? You already trying to kill them off. All right, all right. What's the German Empire doing? Economic resurgence, head of the government. Not bad. Not bad at all. Still trying to buy smelteries, though. Which does suck quite a bit. God, just trying to get one more factory sucks. How's Boston doing? Still up by the same guy, some weird Lothrop Stoddard. A green policy, not bad. Uh, yeah, Minutemen of New York, naturally unequal society. Suppressing the Undermen. Racial catalogs, ooh. Clan aid. And confidence in science. Ooh. Necessary draft. Emergency fortifications, we'll probably need that. Ooh, militarization funded by the elite, yes, please. In order to build up our domestic military industry as quickly as possible, our administration will turn to the elites of New York City for funding. Though we may not agree with the methods of these titans and tycoons, none can deny their wealth and influence, and with that in mind, they would make the perfect economic patrons. With their funding, we shall industrialize and militarize the Big Apple like never before, and in return, they, we will, they will get a return on investment plus interest as well as a cut of the profits. Call for international aid. The world is full of sympathetic ears. We only need to call for their aid, and we shall put out the call for international volunteers and aid in hopes that the people of the world take pity on our plight. Who knows? We may get some supplies or troops for free out of it. Emergency fortifications. Though the river delta on which we live on is a pretty defensible terrain, we must do more in order to adequately defend our city from the modern attack. New fortifications and redoubts shall be built across the city and at all major border crossings and bridges, ensuring that every round of the city is defended around the clock. No foe shall slip by unnoticed, and no enemy shall be able to enter easily. New York City shall be transformed into a modern castle of concrete and steel, all to preserve our newfound freedom. And build up Fort Hamilton. Oh, look at that. We get no political power. Plus zero. Huh. 
Located in the southwest corner of Brooklyn along the interior of the bay, Fort Hamilton is a premier military installation within New York City, first built in 1831 and updated over the years. This old but sturdy fortress could use a renovation. The military base and its defenses shall be expanded, modernized, and overfunded to become the central hardpoint of the city's defense network. Utilize the local youth brain trust. In order to further bolster Dr. Oppenheimer's efforts on the secret Manhattan project being built beneath the Big Apple, Mayor Fiorello H. LaGuardia's administration has given the signal for local colleges and universities to allow their most promising students, scientists, and engineers the opportunity to aid in this historic project. Testing the brightest, most intelligent among the university students at New York City's largest schools, we shall find fresh new minds to aid us in that Herculean endeavor. With students being pulled from all over the boroughs and beyond from the likes of NYU, Columbia, Fordham, Brooklyn University, Manhattan College, Hofstra and more, the best of the next generation shall rise to help the current masters bring our metropolis into the future, and to aid us in a quest to become death, to destroy our worlds. With their help, we shall rise off the so shoulders of giants become times ourselves. A 0% or 0 times 5% research bonus for nuclear technology. I love it. Did we actually get anything out of that? No. Of course, we just read about those. Expand the Brooklyn Naval Yard. I think that'd be good to do. The Brooklyn Naval Yard is the heart of our maritime and naval industry as well as one of the most finest shipbuilding institutions in the former United States. We shall fund this industrial giant, expanding its into operations and increasing its output as we order the BNY to churn out more ships than it ever has before in order to establish a free and independent military navy for New York. The pride of the week, wheat fleet, the fleet week. Fleet week is a time under tradition in New York City. Describing the one year, uh, uh, one week a year, all the Navy ships would come to dock, allowing the sailors to some much needed time off ashore while the ships were serviced, refitted, and repaired. Taking this legacy in stride, we shall keep this tradition alive with our new Navy as we create more new ships and hire more sailors than ever before. Fleet Week shall not die, and the maritime legacy of New York City shall live on as we expand and modernize our flotilla to make it the envy of other port cities the world over and the New York Harbor Sea Wall. In order to defend the city from the foes who would likely attack, by sea through the Atlantic and the Bay, we have gone ahead with a new initiative aimed at fortifying the coastal edges of New York City. All along the New York Harbor, and along with all major coastal regions within the city, new sea walls, pillboxes, and other coastal fortifications will be erected, creating a near impenetrable line of defense that will take the largest amphibious landing in history in order to crack. None shall breach our metropolis, not by land or by sea. And tap into Standard Oil. The famous former monopoly headed by the Rockefeller family, Standard Oil, is still the largest oil company in America, and happens to have its HQ here in Manhattan. We should move to utilize our infrastructure and industry in order to secure a stable oil supply. PT boat down while on a recovery mission to claim dead sailors lost a sea, a job so distressing to make the newest rook rooking puke inside his diving helmet, the small PT boat. Being crewed by a young group of green New York Navy volunteers and an officer hit a bad swell, capsizing the boat out the far shore of Long Island near Montauk. Montauk. In these icy cold waters off the eastern tip of the Long Island, great white sharks known to congregate and are thought to use the waters as a breeding ground. Finding themselves adrift in shark infested and near freezing water, the rookie team began to panic, only made worse when the attached officer kept being order among the greenhorns were pulled down beneath the waves by something unseen but large and powerful enough to drag a fully grown man with kit on without issue. Facing likely death and hypothermia, the rookie to have puked in his diving helmet, the Brooklyn native Roy H. Boehm, Kicked himself into high gear, fending off an attacking shark that swam at him by punching it in the eyes, nose, and gills before rallying his surviving crewmen, before fashioning a makeshift raft from some float stem that rose up from the sinking ship and slowly patting themselves to the shore, or paddling them, themselves there. After hours which seemed like an eternity, Boehm, along with the rest of his crewmates, the one officer lost, uh, and another two lost hypothermia on their return trip, made it safely to the shore. Eventually, after getting into contact with Naval Command and using a local vacation or summer home to call the city, the group was returned safe to, safely to the Navy Yards where they were all taken into medical care. Boehm, however, showed great heroism and quick thinking, has been awarded with the Municipal Medal of Honor and has been fast-tracked for an officer's commission. Now the rest of our armed forces will wait eagerly to see what the young Boehm will do next. Give that man a medal and a commission. Build new municipal airstrips. In order to stockpile and deploy the new aircraft being produced or procured, we must construct airstrips and hangars to hold a growing air force. Open space on the outskirts of the city shall be converted into airstrips and hangar complexes, as well as the first step of expanding our air warfare capabilities. Steel planes from Newark AFB. As a few miles away lies New Jersey City, Newark, one of our sister cities that just so happens to be the location of the famous Newark Air Force Base. We should send some teams to Newark Air Force Base in order to secure ourselves some cheap and reliable aircraft ready to fly out the gate. Though they may not take too kindly to our night raids, they will not have the chance to avoid such complaints as we zoom past it in their aircraft in the Central Park Air Dome. In order to further increase their capacity for aircraft, our administration has gone ahead with a temporary measure to transform a large swath of Central Park into an aerodome. From this massive complex, we shall house fires, bombers, cargo planes, and other aircraft by the thousands. Each one fueled and ready to go at a moment's notice. With this move, we shall truly own the skies above New York City and like flies throwing a candid apple. Our planes shall come to a cloud with a big apple in such numbers that we block out the sun itself. 
and expand the domestic flying and shipping industries. In order to be better feed the people of New York City, we shall expand our shipping industry down to the Port Authority in order to import more food while expanding the merchant fleet and funding our domestic fishing industry to pick up the slack. Our people will have to get used to eating more canned food and whatever fish we catch in the Hudson. The first official fleet week, making an official tradition that persists as Commodore George Dewey's victory over the Spanish through the Battle of Manila Bay in 1898, the mayoral office has gone ahead and his plan officialized what has been colloquially called Fleet Week. For decades, American naval vessels have visited New York for celebrations of much near shore leave, and now New York shall officially declare this traditional holiday. Every Memorial Day from this year for us, our harbors and dockyards centered around the passenger ship terminal in Lower West Side Manhattan shall be open to any and all American vessels so that their sailors may get rest, relaxation, and entertainment they need right here in the Big Apple. With dozens upon dozens of naval ships already participating this year, there's no doubt that Fleet Week shall become a time-honored tradition for many more decades to follow. Semper Fortis. And using the old to teach the new. In order to drum up morale and support for the war effort while also educating and entertaining the masses of our metropolis, a novel idea has been enacted within New York Harbor with the new USS New York out and about on duty, the previous ship to bear the name, the old USS New York, ACR2, that served valiantly both the Spanish and American War and the Great War, has undergone the refitting of a lifetime. With its armament stripped and its a classified system removed, and this old armored cruiser has been transformed into a floating military museum, open for all the public to enjoy and witness. With military hardware, weaponry, aircraft, sea craft, armored vehicles, and even more from across the eras of American military history and from across the branches of the military, the USS New York Land, Sea, and Air Museum is sure to be a popular fixture of the New York City waterfront, boosting morale and educating the public on a noble and proud marital history. Quite the intrepid experience. Now we can choose either military as NYPD or we can grab New York Police Department Auxiliary Forces, which, as much as I want to do militarized NYPD, we're not going that, down that route, and we don't want to get any more authority and Democrat support, so we'll go with this one. We've decided to utilize the New York Police Department in a supporting role to our main armed forces going forward. Though their efforts save the city, frontline combat is more suited to real soldiers. The boys in blue will serve to support and relieve their fellow men in uniform, but that should only be called upon to the frontline troops in the most dire of circumstances. New York City elections of 1941. With another mayoral elect term coming gone, it's once again time to hold elections within the Big Apple. Though numerous city council and state positions are available and being contested, the race shall have eyes on who shall be the next man to lead the city that never sleeps. Racing in this election is Trump and its conservative market-oriented reform party. Steinbeck and his coalition of radical moderate socialists, Wells and his group of progressives and anti-republican liberals, and finally LaGuardia with its classical liberal coalition centered around the big Republican party, of course. Who shall rise to be the next mayor of the Big Apple? Well, yeah, I don't see any point in changing, so we'll go with that group as we do, are currently doing a NYPD auxiliary force. Um, what else can we do? We fund the New York Rubber Company, an upstart company formed at the beginning of our economic rebrand. The New York Rubber Company. Oh crap! Look at that. Oh boy! Holy, oh, holy crap! Um, New York. The company provides a vital service, but is standing on shaky legs as such, with a need of rubber being what it is. <clears throat> Uh, to fuel our war machine in civilian demand, we shall fund the NYRC to provide a steady supply of rubber to the state. Holy smokes, aid received due to our pleas uh, to the international community have not gone unneeded or unheeded. Already the port of New York is bustling with shipments from our new friends, and the people rejoice to see the shelves fill filling once more. Our starvation and certain doom have been avoided, and the city that never sleeps can keep on ticking once more. The party continues in the city that never sleeps. And we get 300... 300 M1 federal, federal M1 grants, not anything else, but just like federal M1 grants, which is, okay, I guess, and refuse. Um, they fall into deaf ears. People begin to feel the pinch of hardship as ration cards are handed out uh, for everything from wheat to, and water to toothpaste from studios or radios. If something isn't done very soon, we may run out of the necessary foodstuffs and other supplies and need to keep the city alive. The city that never sleeps begins to doze off. We get a lot of refusals. Lots and lots of refusals, which does kind of suck, but whatever. Um, we are making more divisions, which is actually pretty nice, actually. And our divisions are actually pretty decent. They're only 18 combo width, but, you know, could be better, could be worse. Uh, extraction, because we can. We can slightly extract a little bit more steel as well. And then after the auxiliary forces... The mob, acid or obstacle, we must finally decide on a hard stance of the commission of Luciano and Lansky. Though these criminals are ruthless, bloodthirsty, and dangerously ambitious, they also show the potential to be a useful tool of the state. We should, could decide to turn a blind eye to some of their less extreme crimes if they agree to help us on matters of national security, and the like, or we can simply put down these criminals like the dogs they are, or utilize loyal national guards. From both these stationed within the city and from those stationed upstate, there exists a sizable population of the New York National Guard loyal to administration. We should move to immediately incorporate these trained soldiers into our ranks so that we may provide us with their bodies, rivals, and experience in the defense of a newly independent home. And what is next? Because eventually we do get over here, pull exiles from upstate academies. 
Throughout the local Tri-State area and explicitly in upstate New York, there exist th numerous prestigious military academies that may be of use to us. Institutions like West Point and the New York Military Academy are full of red-blooded true sons of New York City, and as such, they should surely come marching home if we put out the word. We should invite these officers and soldiers in training to our borders, a neutral safe zone free from the ravages of the war where they can finish their training while serving their hometown. And once they are done being trained, we will have a loyal and experienced new class of officers to press into service. Utilize a mob? Some within our government have come to us with a proposal that would have us utilize a mob for our own ends. The proposal suggests a backroom alliance with Luciano Lansky's commission and their associates in Marink. It would make our enemies sleep with the fishes or simply disappear in return for a weakened police presence and averted eyes to the less obvious criminal dealings, provided they of course continue to grease the wheels of justice and estate crap with ample bribes. And this could be very beneficial to us, as using them could do much to secure our rule, but... There are some things an upstanding government like ours can't be caught doing, like liquidating dangerous, seditious elements within our borders. Through illegally hired hitmen, for example, and this definitely is one of them, so it would have to be discreet. Furthermore, many within our government have argued that if we do this, then we are no better than the despots of old and new. And or the very mobsters and murders we would be dealing with, they say that to ally with the mob would also give them way too much power, perhaps even putting our grip on power in jeopardy. What should we do? Burn that paper and never speak of this again, capiche? Leave it be. It'll be... It will prove useful to us, to the economy, and to the rebuilding efforts. Mafia, military support? It's not bad, but... No. No. Not today. Secure aluminum from Alcoa. <clears throat> Alcoa is an industrial giant base in Pennsylvania, but within the range of influence of our state's economy and supply network. Beyond closed doors and under under the table deal, we shall establish a lucrative and secretive trade deal with Alcoa to have them ship bauxite or over the border to us. Nice. Uh, we could probably go down to honestly export focuses export focus because we'll get slightly more steel that way but we'll see maybe the heart of the global tra arms trade <coughs> sitting in the intersection of some of the world's most lucrative shipping lanes and with some of the largest firearm manufacturer in the old u.s located just miles away our city is in the perfect location to become the central hub of the global arms trade utilizing contacts both foreign and domestic while promising large payouts and profits we shall set ourselves up as this hub a central gray marketplace through which arms sales from across the world can take place think of the profits think of the firearms think of the benefits for the people and that's what we're always thinking about for the people. But it's October 1941, having a good old time. Mexico's dead, as it should be. And the Imperium Britannicum is just having a good old... Oh, my goodness. Well, it looks like Spain's not having a good time. Why well, that's Spain. What do you expect? Red France is weird. I should play as France again. It's been a very long time since I've played as Red France, so... I've never played as NFA, but, you know, I don't think I write it well, but we'll see. Um, also, with these divisions, they're not looking very strong just because we need way more arty now. Because I threw on three artillery battalions on them. Yay! Yay! Kingdom of Italy in the third. These guys are not killing each other yet, which is very strange. Um, Russia is just kind of hanging. What happened to this Transmere? Rome on the first. What happened to the Don Republic? Huh. Well, okay. Uh, it is 41, of course. Let's see. Anything over here? No. 41. Yes. Definitely more arty. Aluminum. And then, of course, tap into Chapacua Mine. One of the only local sources of rare earth materials. Chapacua Mine in Westchester must be nationalized by our administration in order to secure our only readily available source of these rare and crucial materials, of course. <clears throat> A fourth rooster saw Finally. Oh, my goodness. That's actually very nice to have. Uh, recon, because we can. A raid up St. Arsenal. All across our local region, caches of military hardware, just such as the Watervliet Arsenal or the base at West Point, are just laying out in the open, chock full of useful and much-needed equipment, begging to be taken by more than just by just and deserving hands. We shall send covert teams into these bases in a series of night raids in order to steal and source the military supplies needed to keep our army running and our city safe. Think about the army. Think about our people. Think about it. We need it. I'm sorry this campaign has been a little boring. I mean, there's not really much for us to do in New York City. And this is probably the only time I'm actually going to be doing all these focuses, like, with you guys. Just because in the future, I'm probably just going to just have you read them if you want. And then keep moving on. Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine other paths to do. Ten paths to do. So, those are much more important than these paths. But we'll still see what we're going to do. But you have to Berlin. Honestly, I don't think going to war with Third International... I mean... I'm telling you, what the heck... Oh. Wasn't that different? L Ricardo Lombardi. That's kind of cool. Alright, well, whatever. I think just in the future, if I set this up to be more appropriate, like, we could have New England form, but them being completely independent and just 
wanting independence, and then maybe we could fight them in the future in another campaign, and then reclaim America that way, I would think probably be best. So, I think that's probably what we want to do in the future. This one, I think, will just probably remain independent. We're getting some coastal forts. We already have some forts as is, so. Um, the wars over here are just kind of stagnating. Not really much is going on. Spain is in fire, but what else is new? Petrograd, Balten, Deutsch. Stadt des Balten, Deutschen Orden. Never played as White Ruthenia either. She plays Serbs again. Uh, these guys are doing okay ish around here. But I expected to really give them a fight. National Pacification Army, of course. Yeah. Oh! What? Since when can the Pacific States of America join the Russian faction? Under Walt Disney? What? That, okay. In Kaiser Redux, there's always something that you never expect. Why would they join that group? And raid upstate arsenals. Honestly, we might just do overtures to Ottawa. We'll see, though. A new army for New York. Headed by the military geniuses of John F. O'Ryan, and with the help of NYPD officials like Chief Valentine, a new independent army has been created for the Big Apple. Trained locally and equipped with the best weapons we can produce, steal, or buy, this new arms force is the pride of our metropolis, as well as the first and final line of defense. The sea that never sleeps shall never falter as long as this army stands strong. Every army leader gets organizer, commando, and stuff like that. Nice. More division defense of core territory. Very good. Um, if that's the case, I do want to come over here and just, like, just buy them all up as much as we possibly can. Sinatra's here, of course. Uh, Costum uh, Williams Air Commander. That's kind of cool. But I do want to see the wars. What are the casualties like? That will determine which way we go. Canadian Entente. They're international. Two million. Ooh, Entente's lost a lot of guys. <clears throat> Second Belkrieg. The Entente, of course, 320,000. It's those guys. Uh, our expect has lost a lot. Honestly, I'm not really sure. Either one really does suck. German Baratia War. German Italian War. Third International. Wow. Germany's lost a lot of guys already. A million. Oh, they're like no manpower. And these guys are all unlimited conscription. These guys don't have a lot of manpower either. Russia has a good amount. Mm. <coughs> oh, would you look at that? We're really getting our naval doctrine done, which is awesome. And we have no ships. Go figure. We do it again. Oh, yeah, we can. Look at that. Nice. No tanks, of course, but whatever. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. Oh, crap. Research and production? My bad. More thoughts attack? Generic artillery? Sure, go ahead. I just forgot to scroll down. My bad. And yeah, we'll do that, too. Rated the arsenals down there? Yes, please. All I want is a guarantee of independence. A free, independent, safe New York City. I'd love to intervene in the Civil War, but we can't do that one. Friends of the Federalists. Cynicalist, cozy with the Constitutionalists. Alright, now we gotta make a choice. Beyond the city limits, I mean, I'd like to, but just for this campaign, that doesn't make sense for us to. Yeah, we'll go with uh, over to Ottawa. They'll guarantee us, guarantee New York City. If we get attacked, kind of a buddy up to Berlin. These guys might join, maybe. They are national populists, the German faction, but they're only social conservatives. I just... Oh, wait. What happened to uh, the other guy? Oh, whatever. Edward, the market liberals were pretty close to market liberals as well, but I just don't think they can do that well against the Third International. I mean, they're super weak. And the Reichsback, though, isn't... They're doing even worse. They lost Mets. And they're not even fighting the Russians. You know, I'll go the Entente. It makes... It makes sense. Overtures to Ottawa. Despite their ambitions to become the hegemon of the New World, Canada and their allies in the Entente are the best chance of maintaining their independence. We should diplomatically approach the Canucks and let them know of our peaceful intentions and desire to cooperate. With their guarantee, perhaps we'll even survive this war. A free, independent, safe New York City. There's no point in getting mired with the petty struggles of the foreign powers of our fellow Americans. New York City shall remain a neutral oasis of peace and camaraderie. Uh, there's no war within New York City, and there never will be. War you lose war sport, get more defense on core territory, just fight World goes up by a whole bunch. Uh, cool. Embrace its destiny as a free, independent city-state as separate from the rest of America. The fate of the SS Bokanowski, built to be the largest and fastest passenger ship afloat, the steam turboelectric propelled. SS Bokanowski was the pride of the Communist France's civilian navy, or rather was before its final turbulent fate. 
Crossing the Atlantic in a record of 4.14 days, the SS Bokanowski, named after the former naval secretary of the Revolutionary France, made its final journey as it left its home port of Le Havre, bound for New York City for the 139th and final time. Upon arriving in New York City Harbor, the massive ocean liner was onboarded and then seized by the Port Authority of New York City, enraging the commune of France and their allies and their international, but securing one of the greatest ships ever built for her own fleet, renamed the USS Lafayette and designed to be retrofitted into a troop transport, faded other plans. On the morning of February 9th, sparks from the welding torch ignited flammable cupboards filled life vests, spreading flames of the flammable varnished wood and causing the ship to be consumed in a massive inferno. With the ship's ample fire extinguishing system discontinued, uh, disconnected during the refits, there was nothing to stop the blaze, and within 15 minutes the entire ship had capsized and sunk into the mud at the bottom of Pier 88, despite the apparent accidental nature of the blaze. That has now stopped local crime boss and Luciano family affiliate, Alberta. Anastasia from claiming responsibility, and while other New Yorkers fear a sabotage job from the powers overseas, regardless of how the blaze occurred. New York City is once again on high alert, and we must now work to reassure our populace yet again. Authorized Operation Underworld, with security being the most utmost priority of a newly independent state, and with the global tensions rising with each passing day, the government in New York City has grown paranoid over the possibility of sabotage and subterfuge. An attitude only further fueled due to the mysterious burning of the USS Balkanowski. With this in mind, numerous additional patrols and guard details have been established to keep the city safe, but manpower has begun to run thin between volunteers, the NYPD, and the National Guard as such. Some within her cabinet suggested a deal with the devil's source. By turning the five families into Luca Luciano through our liaison, Joseph Lanza, the mob boss behind Fulton Fish Market's backroom dealings, we could perhaps persuade these mobsters to help guard our docks yards, to prevent subterfuge and sabotage of attempts. In return for turning a blind eye to some of their lesser crimes while also providing a nominal sum of money, these mobsters would work on a payroll as guards and private investigators. Sure, however, many are uneasy with, these propo with the proposition of working with blank criminals with pushback to this Operation Underworld already mounting. What should we do? Make the deal? Small price to pay for, uh, to ensure security? We do not engage or negotiate with mobsters. And then, with our internal situation largely stabilized and, of course, set... <clears throat> For all metropolis and the lands within our control, the time has come for New York City to step out on the biggest stage of all. No, not Broadway, but the international stage. It's here that we will enter the big league. Finally, to decide on the destiny of our fine city and our peoples we seek the allies, find recognition, and determine the place in the wider world. We'll see what happens. And this last one here is, uh, solidify ourselves as American capital tourism. The bold and brightened up first, though. Much to surprise, there's been a huge increase in castaway cadets from nearby military academies. We expected some of the nearby West Point as well as New York Military Academy, from which we received a few dozen recruits and a handful of instructors, but nothing like this. Recently, there's been more and more cadets arriving, claiming to have been exiled from academies, further out of state, and with dozens of groups claiming to be as far south as Valley Forge, as far north as Norwich, have arrived today, and slipped through the lines during the fighting between syndicals and Federalist forces, hoping to bring a neutral city to flee to where they could recover and avoid the terrible violence they'd seen on the journey. They bring troubling news, however, warning that some military academies have begun preparing to send out their cadets as active soldiers, citing a state of emergency to justify sending boys to war. Luckily, these few have been saved. War is no place for children, right? What the heck happened here? Why did the PSA get this? Did they just return it? Why did they return that? Now I don't want to join the Entente. Oh, god dang it. I joined the wrong faction. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Well, it's fine. If not, whatever. Yep, oh, well, that was really fast. A land of beautiful sights, endless amenities, and good entertainment. The New York City and the surrounding lands, like the beautiful beaches and parks of Long Island, are an undeniable tourist magnet. We need only to advertise this fact across the globe in order to drum up more local business. And then, we'll end with International Neutral Zone. Taking our new identity of neutrality to heart, our administration has moved forward with the plan to declare New York City as a free and neutral zone for all the world to witnesses and utilize. And in all may find refuge and asylum here, no questions asked, and with no extradition. We shall stay out of all world affairs, and in return they sh we pr shall provide a safe haven for those on the run while maintaining their status as the financial capital of the world. Until we get invaded, of course. Hey look, more divisions, just in case. Not bad. And we have um, on both of uh, Long Island and over here as well, so... That's a lot of claims in our territory! That's a lot of claims. What are you going to kill off the PSA? Why is the Austrian Empire just hanging out? There's a lot of questions I have for this campaign. A lot of it just doesn't make any sense. But then again, it is cause of redux. What do you expect? Craziness. Lots and lots and lots of craziness. Ooh, Spain's looking better now. Uh, Germany's looking okay-ish. Dominion of India looking real sad. Like, real flipping sad. So what's your answer? I hope they say no. Never mind. We join the Entente. God dang it. Nope. We're not, we're not joining the war. <laughs> I can't quit joining the war. I don't mind joining the IEDC, but we ain't joining the war. You've got someone else coming if you think we're joining that. There we go. If you don't read about that, please go ahead. As well as this one, too. No. Well, that's fine. We better get a lot out of this. Is this with economy? 
Factory output could be pretty useful. Um, naval engineers, no, not really. Construction speed, hell with that. Just build whatever we can. <clears throat> I don't want. I don't want to go to war. Not aggression factor with us would be good. Be very good. Belgrade pocked. Yeah, Castle Redux has so much, so much content though. So much past to do. We'll get there someday. French state. Persia. Oh, look at that. I gotta play as Afghanistan. Who the heck plays as Afghanistan? I swear, man. I don't know anyone that would actually want to play Afghanistan. But yeah, I've been playing this for like two hours already. It's kind of crazy. Portuguese Empire. Hey, ding dongs. AI, get to Reykjavik so you get some supplies. And they can get over there and just give them supplies too. I don't think we joined the wrong faction. Hopefully it will be impenetrable up here. Well, if the AI knew what they were doing, then it would be impenetrable, but still. They just gave up on war. They gave up. Plenty of guns. Pretty nice. Anything else around here? Oh, leave the IEDC? No. War propaganda is not bad. Oh, join the IISC? Yeah, that's worth it. That's worth it. Let's finish one off and probably call it a campaign. I could annex these consequences and annex these guys, but now we're good for now. Lagarde has done his work for New York City. And that's why I guess I always saw his name um, when I went to New York City Airport, whatever it was. The most natural ally to our fine city is the Entente, with Canada being so close and so interested in the internal affairs of the American Civil War. Though not the most powerful of potential allies, it is undeniable that should the Entente intervene in the American crisis, New York would be great, great, greatly benefit. Even more so, the Entente's grand homecoming is successful. With the treaty signed and the deals closed, uh, the constant stream of Canadian and French advisors representing the IEDC arrived in the city, and an unexpected effect of this deal, however, has been the mass arrival of American refugees. Having initially fled across the Canadian-American border, the Canadian government has been seen fit to direct them to the city, with hopes that they would feel more at home among fellow Americans. Many of these refugees have volunteered for the National Guard Service to ensure they can protect their family's new home. Cheers for you, Canadian friends! We're not joining the war, but that's pretty much it, my friends. We've done it. I think we've done every single focus available to us under LaGuardia, but it's been one heck of a campaign. Well, there's a lot more paths that we got to do, though. Wow, we ended up with being 55% Republican Party of Social Liberals. Whatever. If you enjoy the campaign, though, do consider living a fat, fat LaGuardia like. Subscribe if you are new. Uh, 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 check out my Discord link in the description below. Let's read this final thing, and then we'll end the episode. As the war and chaos outside New York continues to spread like wildfire, we've decided to formulate a plan to remain neutral in this crisis. In order to preserve New York's independence and sovereignty, Aurelio LaGuardia has decided that New York should become an international zone of sorts, open to all biased to none like the famous Swiss of Europe. No longer will we live behind a singular and exclusive identity, that of being Uncle Sam. Rather, follow the multicultural icon of Lady Liberty. She guides us towards peace and prosperity. Our borders and businesses shall be open to all. And Old Ellis Island shall be renovated and expanded in order to deal with the increased influx of immigrants and refugees. Our Big Apple has always been a cosmopolitan metropolis. Now she fully embraces identities. We work to keep New York City free from the dangerous tethers of the world politics and diplomacy in order to protect the paradise we built here. The Swiss of America. Well, like I said, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.